moving on with number 234 in the Masters of Cinema series from this Edgar Allan Poe, Bela Lugosi set is The Black Cat. Now this is probably the most famous movie from this set and was one that I was rather eager to check out so I, I saved it for last. Um, and we have Lugosi uh, and Karloff here and one of the fun things about this one, it's just ridiculously silly when the title card comes up. Karloff is just, he's just credited as Karloff. Just that one name is <laughs> just, is bonkers. And what you have here is you have Lugosi as Dr. Vitus and we have Karloff as Hilmeyer. Now, Vitus is on a train where he interrupts a young honeymooning couple, has a, a conversation with them and is kind of infatuated with the, the, the bride and he kind of uh, joins along their journey because they're kind of going in the same direction they decide to share a car uh, an accident happens and they all end up at Hale Meyer's house which is this really large sprawling oddity of a building that's a top um, a kind of hillside, there's a cemetery at the bottom, there is a history of battles being fought there and a lot of people dying and we kind of get thrust into this cat and mouse game of these two guys who obviously have a great deal of respect for each other but have a deep-seated revenge in both of their hearts. These are both not bad guys, although one certainly is more evil than the other, but definitely heading down a dark path these characters and you get Vitus, Lugosi's character who is more sort of acting of things going on behind the scenes you feel that he knows a lot more and he does indeed more than the viewer and is certainly working a lot of things out is playing the long game uh, with what he's doing and is more playful with, with the way he is is articulating his words and, and and dancing around the sort of sets that they have. Karloff is definitely more theatrical here. The way he moves and enters a scene and sits up in bed, the way he smiles so ominously towards the characters. Uh, he is a character who knows as well his power and his limitations or lack thereof. There is a mystery within this movie that you don't even realise is happening. There is the mystery of the history between these two guys which you believe is drip fed to you and you get this underlying mystery of what Hailmeyer is all about. And I don't want to spoil it but it's a really fun th final third where it really twists and turns into something that I really wasn't expecting and I'm really I want to discuss it but I don't want to waste that element of the movie for you because I find it was a really nice twist and turn and I really did like a, way, a lot of the way the things happened in it. It has Karloff, it has Lugosi and it has these two powerhouses doing wonderfully different varied performances that just bounce off each other. There seems to be a definite rapport between those two characters. Regardless of what went on behind the scenes, they seem to be consummate professionals and they seem to have that kind of interaction between the two of them. The supporting characters are quite good as well. And one of the things that I, I really did appreciate about this was the idea of horror that it has. You, you're thrown into this world of Hailmeyer who's open to Vitus. So you, you've got a feeling that they know more about each other than we the viewers definitely do, which really adds a lot to the characters. And at one point Hailmeyer is kind of showing uh, Vitus around his kind of dungeon area almost where he has these corpses that are embalmed or locked away in strange ways that just has this oddity about it. It's weird they're in a glass cabinet, the hair is floating upwards, it just looks strange and it has lots of little things like that. Now this is very, and I mean extremely loosely tied to Poe's black cat because they have a black cat in the movie and they even say that Vitus has the cat an irrational fear of black cats uh, and it's unusual to see a hero a main character or who you think is, is 
possibly a hero, uh, just haphazardly kill cats left, right and centre whenever he sees one. Um, there's one startles him when he's standing in a room having a conversation. He picks up a knife, I don't know where from, and just throws it um, at the cat, killing it. It's weird, it's odd, it's ominous, it has so many fun, playful moments. I watched this and I instantly watched it again. I was so enraptured by the performances, by the mystery, by the way everything just unveiled itself to me. And watching it the second time, you see all the little facial tics and the mannerisms that come out that so lavishly create this wonderful story. The black cat was a real treat to visit. I loved it. And again, I didn't go into all the extras on this disc, but I did listen to the commentary. And these are some of the best, the most insightful, well-prepared and thought out commentaries I think I've ever heard. So much so that I could see myself revisiting them again, which is not often that happens with commentaries. If you haven't picked up this set again, I'm going to urge you, urge you to check this one out. Two movies in, to, well I've watched three but I've only discussed two in the channel so far and I can wholeheartedly recommend that you pick this up. I urge you to pick this up if you're at least a little bit curious about this wonderful collection of movies. I'd love to know your thoughts on The Black Cat. I know you guys are going to be so knowledgeable and just hit me with your opinions. I can't wait to read and I'll see them in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Man V Film.